We like to go camping and many of the videos that I make are related to camping either in our electric RV or in our Tesla. When Stoke Voltaics reached out to me asking if I would review their Jolie smart mug or the electric kettle, I decided to try it out to see how well these devices may fit into our future adventures. They aren't paying me anything nor are they dictating that I say anything about these devices. Let's start first with the smart mug. This is the packaging that the smart mug comes in has information about it on the sides of course and then some of the specifications here and some information about the stainless steel here. So this is a 14 ounce mug. I'm going to go ahead and see how big it looks. So it comes with these instructions and then here's the mug itself and you can see it comes with a, a lid here and this lid will completely, let's go test it in a, in a second, but this will completely keep the liquid in. So it has a door here that pops up, so it has the drinking hole right there. And then this up here has a rubber stopper in it, and that is for the straw. And the straw is right here. This is a glass straw, and that fits right there. So if you were using the straw, there is a little bit of a gap there. It could spill technically with just the straw there. Uh, but if you were drinking this and you had everything stopped up, then this would completely protect it. And then also in the box, we have the coaster. So this is for charging it, of course. And it has some stats about it on the bottom here. And then last but not least is the power cord for that charger. This power cord is USB-C. So I love that, that it is more universal in nature. The power supply outputs 15 volts and 2.4 amps. So that's actually a pretty powerful power supply. That's nice. All right, let's test out the lid on this mug. So I'm gonna pop it off. We're gonna fill the mug pretty much completely up with just regular water. Pop this lid back on, turn it upside down, and not even a single drop comes out. The coaster is how it's charged, and I'm glad to see they're powering the coaster with a USB-C plug. It has a 2900 milliamp hour battery built into the mug itself, which the specifications states can power the mug for 120 minutes at 120 degrees Fahrenheit while not on the coaster. The mug can heat between 120 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can only go up to 149 degrees while not on the coaster. A typical smartphone battery is roughly 2,500 to 4,000 milliamp hours as a point of reference to this mug's battery size at 2,900 milliamp hours. The bottom of the mug is thicker than a typical mug to accommodate the battery heating element and electronics, but the mug can still hold 14 fluid ounces, which is actually pretty good. So I wanted to demonstrate the size of this because remember the Julie mug, smart mug, has a false bottom about here, and so there's a battery and electronics in the bottom part. And when I looked at this mug, it doesn't have that. And I thought, for sure, this is going to hold more water. So I thought, well, why not test it? And then I have this one over here, which is a much narrower mug, but it's taller as well. So this Julie mug is just close to the top edge, I think about as full as you would fill it and not have it be spilling. So I'm gonna pour that over here to this big mug. Didn't drop any. And surprisingly, it's actually pretty close to the same size. And it's holding about the same amount of liquid. It's a little bit below the rim compared to this one. So this one could hold a tiny bit more, but really not much. Now, if we pour over here to the taller mug, it is pretty much exactly the same. And then also I thought I'd go ahead and just verify the actual quantity in here, at least in um, imperial measurement. So this right here is showing just shy of one and a half cups. It's, the line is right here. I wanted to do a quick test of the actual capacity of the mug. And I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but the water is filled right up to the edge of the brim. I'll tap it so you can see the water right there. And this is actually the 14 ounces that it says that it is. So I'm gonna to try to spill as little of this as possible. All right, I splashed a tiny bit. And you can see the line right there of 14 ounces and it's right there at the line, maybe a tiny bit below it, but I also spilled just a tiny bit. But in any case, as you saw, the mug was filled all the way up to the brim. So they are saying it's 14 ounces. I don't know that that's 14 ounces of usable capacity because if you filled this with a hot drink all the way to the very brim, you're going to spill some of it and you're not gonna be happy. So. I would say the functional use of it is just a little bit less than that. To test that, we can see the functional capacity here. This would be my my comfort level. It would be right pretty close to the brim. And if we pour that into the measuring cup, then that comes actually to 12 fluid ounces. And I think that's more realistic. So that's what I'm gonna be using for my test that I'm about to do to see how quickly this can heat up water from cold. 
It's made out of 304 stainless steel and it is IPX7 waterproof. So you can hand wash it and even briefly immerse it in water without any problems. Make sure you do not run it through the dishwasher though, or the microwave for that matter. The lid and straw are dishwasher safe though. The instructions are well written and illustrated, giving examples for using the mug directly or how to install the app and control the mug with that. The mug has four buttons on it. One of them is centered on the bottom and is a physical soft rubber button that you press and hold for five seconds to turn the mug on. Then there are three buttons on the front, the arrow buttons for increasing or decreasing the set temperature and the function button in the center to turn on or off the heating or to toggle the display for the battery state of charge, things like that. The mug lightly vibrates with haptic feedback each time one of the front buttons is touched and if a setting is changed in the mobile app. Also, the mug will automatically detect when there is no liquid inside and it will automatically shut itself off. Regarding the mobile app, it connects to the mug via the Bluetooth wireless protocol and I was able to easily connect to the mug with no problems. The mug will work just fine without the mobile app, but the app does give additional controls and information in an obviously much larger screen and interface. For instance, the app shows the exact state of charge of the battery in 1% increments. The app allows you to set a timer to turn off the mug after a set amount of time. You can see the current temperature on either the mug or the app easily as well as adjust the set temperature easily with either method. In my experience, it's easy enough to just interact with the mug directly that I didn't really need the app most of the time except I liked being able to see the mug battery percentage as I was doing my testing. The mug will show a rough indication of the battery's charge level with a battery icon at roughly 20% granularity, but only when it's not heating. Or if you set the mug on the coaster, then it will briefly display the battery charge state icon. The rough state of charge is probably fine for most people. Another thing the app has exclusively is the temperature presets, and it's where you change the mug's display between Fahrenheit and Celsius, which is perhaps the most important thing the app does, depending on what type of measurement you want and what it comes with. The contact points on the bottom of the mug that interface with the coaster are circular, so the mug will continue charging no matter how the mug is rotated, which is a great design. The charging coaster's power transformer that it comes with outputs 15 volts at 2.4 amps, which is more than some other USB electrical sources can supply. So if you want to power it from an alternative USB-C source, make sure it supports that voltage and amperage. For instance, as a test, I plugged the coaster directly into the USB-C ports in my Model Y, and it was able to charge the mug just fine. I'm here in our Model Y and I wanted to test whether or not I could charge the smart mug off of the Model Y's uh, USB-C ports. As you can see right here, there's two USB-C ports just here on the side and this one right here is the wire that I'm going to experiment with. So the other end of that wire is this right here. So I'm going to put the coaster right there. And these are the contact points that connect with the bottom of the mug to charge it. And then this USB-C cable shows a meter of how many watts are being pulled on the side of it. So I can set this mug right here. Oh, would you look at that? So that's the charging indicator showing that the mug battery is charging. So you can see right there that, if I'll tilt this, you can see that better. The mug uh, battery is pulling now about 12 to 13 watts. And of course that will reduce once the battery charges on the mug. But you could just continuously have the mug on there other than when you're taking a sip of course and you could just be keeping your beverage hot while you're on a road trip now obviously this is not the most secure location this this coaster has a, a lip around it so the mug is not going to just slide out but it could tip out if you drive crazy um, but the mug did come with a lid on it so if you put that lid on it maybe even use the straw uh, this is not such a bad option uh, for driving and keeping your beverage warm while you drive down the road and it, it could keep it quite hot obviously because this mug is doing just that and then also on the bottom of the coaster it has a rubber ring going all the way around it and that actually makes it stick to this surface pretty good so like I said it's not going to really slide around unless you accelerate heavily or you know, move in any direction really heavily but it will just sit there and keep your your drink hot that's pretty cool however I tried powering it from some other sources and it didn't work I'm now here in our Model S, and as you can see down there, I'm plugged into one of the native ports that comes, you know, came with the car, not through an inverter, and it is not working here. So there's something different uh, between them, which is unsurprising. The Model Y is much newer. This is what we've been using for years to charge our cameras and cell phones and whatnot when we're on trips. The, the coaster does not work, and it will not charge the mug with that either. In my testing, it took 33% of the battery to heat 12 ounces of water from 64 degrees to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, going off of the temperature display on the front of the mug. 
I found that display was about 8 degrees lower than when I measured the water temperature with my ThermPro Plus. I did another test of warming water directly from 64 degrees to 134 degrees Fahrenheit and it took 47% of the battery and 50 minutes. I'm setting up an experiment here. I have the mug turned on but not heating yet because you can see the red dot's not there. I have a thermometer set in there. It's at 64 degrees right now, the water in there. And I've made sure the probe is not touching the walls or the bottom so it's not going to have false readout on that. And then I've got a stopwatch. So I'm going to go ahead and push start over here. So I push that button right there and so the red button is blinking. And I'm going to go ahead and start the stopwatch. And we're going to see how long it takes to get the temperature of the water up to as hot as this mug will go, which is 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh yes, one other point of clarification is I have 12 ounces in here exactly, because you can see it's not filled all the way to the brim, which is 14 ounces. Uh, that is its advertised capacity. I've taken two ounces out so that it's not about to spill over. This is a more realistic amount, I think. One other point of observation I just noticed is you can see on the mug here, it shows its current temperature and it shows that as 65 degrees Fahrenheit. But the uh, ThermPro over here that I have is indicating 68 0.5 degrees. So there's a discrepancy there, unsurprising, but a little bit of a discrepancy. Now, I think it should be clear to everyone that this is not its intended use case per se. Most people are going to put already heated beverage into the mug and then it keeps their beverage hot. Regardless, I thought I'd do this test because I thought it would be interesting to see how powerful it is and how quickly it can heat the water. This is probably going to take a while in my guess. You can see it's a constant about uh, eight degrees different. Uh, I've noticed between the Therm Pro Plus and the Julie mug. It's been 24, almost 25 minutes to get up to 110 degrees indicated on the mug, but my Therm Pro over here shows 121 degrees. So that's a pretty big temperature discrepancy right there. I just poured the 200 degree water from the electric kettle into the smart mug, and you can see here, it now just says HT for high temperature, I believe. I also did a test where I put 158 degree water in the mug and left the mug off the coaster set to the maximum temperature of 149 degrees Fahrenheit. The mug's temperature limit of the coaster is 149 degrees, but on the coaster it's 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I just finished my endurance test of the mug, not plugged, not on the coaster, and just trying to maintain 149 degrees Fahrenheit, and it lasted uh, an hour and 16 minutes. It took me a minute to stop it, so. During that time, however, it slowly lowered the temperature down closer to 130 degrees, so it couldn't sustain 149 degrees. I tried several times to adjust it higher, and it just kept indicating that the set temperature was already 149 degrees, and it just couldn't sustain that higher temperature. I then put on the lid, and that's what it required, as the temperature then increased up to 149 degrees. So in that case, in the case of my test of an hour and 16 minutes, keep in mind the lid was off almost that entire time, so it would be able to last a little longer with the lid on, most likely. I speculate that the mug was likely just simply designed to sustain temperatures and not heat drinks from cold, and my theory is proven out in my testing. Throughout all this testing, the outside of the mug is warm, but never gets too hot to touch. The other device that Julie sent me is their electric kettle, which doesn't have a battery and is powered directly by a standard household socket at 120 volts, which is commonly referred to as a 110 outlet, and it uses up to 500 watts. This kettle is larger than the smart mug as its internal volume is 30 ounces, but its max safe fill level is 16 ounces or 473 milliliters. There's nothing stopping the user from filling it up all the way, but just be careful with what you're doing that it doesn't boil over and get liquid on the buttons or the switches or the power cord at the base. It's meant to be more of a pot with its own built-in heating and it pairs well with the smart mug to make the beverage hot, then pour that drink into the smart mugs. This is the electric kettle and this is what it looks like in the box. And so it has some information here on the back about it. Otherwise the box is uh, more simple than the smart mug, the kettle comes with this lid. So there's a hole in the lid here that is for a straw, and then you have a, a, an opening there for sipping, and then some ventilation holes there. And then inside the mug, there is the power cord. And this power cord is just a standard power cord that I've seen for printers and computers and various other electronic devices. So that's nice that that's standard. And then there's the instruction or user manual in here, and it just has the general basic instructions on how to operate the the kettle and then it has a sticker for stoke voltaics and then that's the inside of the kettle right there so let's test this out first by heating up water in it and we you can see here on the inside that there are some lines of uh, measurement which is nice i'm going to fill it up to the 16 ounces and then we'll see how long it takes to get that to boiling 
The outside of it is lined with neoprene to keep it insulated and to protect the user from hot metal, which is made out of 304 stainless steel. The control interface is quite simple. There's an on or off button, then three cooking settings, which are drink mode, which heats the water to boiling and then automatically turns off, and then eat mode, which heats to boiling point and then continues cooking until the appliance is manually turned off, and then pop mode, which heats to the ideal popcorn popping temperature, and then after the process of making the popcorn is done, it automatically shuts off. Because it doesn't have a battery at all, it obviously requires an AC outlet that can supply up to 500 watts. In our case, camping in our RV, we have an easy supply of electricity, so that's no problem there. But there's no way to run this kettle from either our Tesla Model S or Model Y because unfortunately, they don't have an AC outlet. And their 12 volt DC power ports can only supply up to 192 watts peak or 144 watts continuous. This would work great with any vehicle that does have a 120 volt standard household outlet though. It's likely technically possible to connect an inverter directly to the 12 volt battery of a vehicle with which to power this kettle, but I'm not going to test that because I suspect most people wouldn't be willing to do that. If you do want to use this kettle in any vehicle that cannot directly supply the electricity, then you could use a portable power station such as from Bluetti, Anchor, Goal Zero, EcoFlow, Lion Energy, Jackery, etc. So I'm not going to do the same test on the electric kettle that I did on the smart mug, but this is obviously equipment that's purpose built for this type of thing, which is getting water up to temperature or food quickly. So I'm going to push the start button and then over here, I'm going to push the start button on my stopwatch. And then over here we have the uh, temperature gauge, which is just the probe sticking in there in the water and it's not touching the sides or the bottom. So it's starting out here at 69.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see how long it takes to get to boiling. And while I am filming a time lapse of this, which I will show you in just a moment, look at how fast it's climbing. That is so much faster than the smart mug, which is unsurprising. This, this is what, like I said, what the smart mug was not designed for is this. This would be designed to get it up to temperature and then you put it into the smart mug and it maintains the temperature. But we're one minute in and it's already gone up to 88 degrees and climbing. It has now been four and a half minutes, as you can see here on the timer. And look at the temperature. Yeah, you can really clearly see uh, that it's doing its job. And if you, if I put my finger right here, this is the uh, seam between the bottom controls down here and the actual mug up here. The temperature is now at 203 degrees and it's only been about six and a half minutes. And you can see up here, the water is now to a rolling boil. And over here on my temperature gauge, it indicates 204.6 degrees. And this is what the outside of the electric kettle looks like. So it's showing 140 degrees down here in the hottest part. And uh, keep in mind there's neoprene here, so I can actually touch this and it's just warm. It doesn't actually feel all that hot. I can you know, keep my fingertips on it and it's not too hot to touch, but it is, it is warm for sure. So yeah, this works really well. It took six and a half minutes to get the full 16 ounces up to boiling. I also tested the popcorn function and it does indeed work for that purpose. I'm going to try a different test now. It has this pop feature and I've put in two tablespoons of popcorn, a little bit of white sugar, and a little bit of coconut oil. So I'm going to pop the lid on here to protect myself, of course, and then push the start button. And then also what I'm gonna do here is just shake this around a little bit, get the contents nicely, nicely spread out and coated in there. And we'll see how that looks. Yeah, that looks better. It's now been going for about a minute and it is starting to get hot. You can see it bubbling. So I'm gonna keep the lid on it now cause it could pop on us any second, but I've just been shaking it periodically. Now that there's a little bit that has popped, I'm gonna take a risk. You can see steam coming out the lid, but I'm gonna pop this open. Oh, yep. There you go, you can see it. So it's working great for popping popcorn for sure. I'm gonna wait till it's done and then we're gonna see how full it is to see if my guess of two tablespoons is the appropriate amount of unpopped kernels. And I think that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And this is how much popped popcorn I ended up with. Well, that's pretty close to perfect actually. So about two tablespoons worth is perfect. I've emptied all the popcorn out of it and there were some unpopped kernels in the bottom but that kind of just depends on your popcorn stock and how how old it is. This is a little bit older popcorn, I think. Uh, but it stayed pretty clean in there. I'm gonna clean it and see how well it looks. I've just finished cleaning out the kettle after popping the popcorn and it cleaned up perfectly.
The manual has the basic information that I would expect to be able to use the device. The manual probably should mention how many unpopped popcorn kernels to put in without exploding the lid off. In conclusion, this is a useful tool for making hot beverages, cooking small amounts of food, or popcorn for someone who wants to use electricity as a fuel source instead of comparable devices that often use propane or butane. If you have a portable power station, especially with solar panels, or in our case, a less portable power station that is our entire travel trailer RV with solar on the roof, this works great. Alternatively, perhaps, if you are staying in hotels, this is a good option to be able to prepare simple meals in the hotel room without generating carbon monoxide, and you wouldn't have any problems taking it on an airplane, unlike a butane canister, which is not allowed on an airplane. This would not be a viable option for backpackers who are typically extremely weight conscious because they carry everything on their back. A backpacker would do better with a typical lightweight butane canister with a compact nozzle and a basic pot such as this one that I have with fins on the bottom that can heat water extremely quickly. The disadvantage of butane is where you run out of fuel and that's where the electric kettle paired with a solar powered power bank would excel. Engineering and technology is always a balance of various priorities and technological constraints, and I'm glad to see varied options in the space to fit the various circumstances and needs. I wish this kettle had more varied heat controls, such as a dial to just turn the temperature to exactly what's needed to, for instance, and maintain a simmer, perhaps, instead of just fully boiling and cooking everything at the max temperature. I hope my review has been helpful, and if you are interested in picking up either a smart mug or an electric kettle for yourself, I've included links to both of them in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.